Welcome to the August 2013 episode of Iowa City in Focus. I'm your host, Mary Bryant. Iowa City's downtown plays host to numerous events each year, not to mention its many daily visitors. And with such heavy usage, things are bound to get worn out. So the city is looking to update its downtown and wants your input on how to do that. On this month's episode, I'll talk with Nancy Bird, the executive director of the Iowa City Downtown District, about the streetscape update planned for downtown Iowa City and how community members can submit their ideas for the project. Then you'll hear about a new mobile library that has been making the rounds to Iowa City's neighborhoods. Finally, we'll highlight an innovative small business that has moved into Iowa City, which doesn't follow the typical business model. Stay tuned. Today I'm talking with Nancy Bird, the Executive Director of the Iowa City Downtown District. And today we're talking about a project that she's working closely with the City of Iowa City on called Streetscape Design. Can you tell me a little bit more? I think I said it wrong. Sure. Um, it's called the Streetscape Update. The Streetscape Update. Yeah. Um, the City of Iowa City um, has consulted out to take a new look at the downtown public realm areas. And we're a partner in that process. So it's really a streetscape update to make sure that we're looking at all the public furniture, um, the trees, the way the pedestrian mall is laid out, some of the things that occur as far as lane widths, those kinds of things in the public realm or in the streets, and updating them for years to come. So the city's leading the process and it's, their, it's really their project. There's three primary stakeholders, the downtown district, which I represent, um, the University of Iowa, and some of the arts who throws very large regional events. So it's been a really great process so far. And you have a website set up called Inspire right. Downtown IC. Yeah, it's a unique project in that we really want to make sure that this is a community plan. I mean, clearly, if you look behind me, there's tons of people down here all the time. And we recognize that it's not just about the businesses and it's not just about the residents. It's really about people who visit and use the downtown in many different ways. So there's a website that's been created um, that's called inspireddowntownic.com. And it's trying to capture all the inspirations of anybody who wants to participate in the process for their ideas. What kinds of ideas have you had you know, as a public member um, or as a business or as a resident that you want the um, community leaders, the city and other stakeholders to look at and think about as we go through the streetscape update process? Well, it's really nice that you're asking for input from the people that will be using it. Do you have certain areas that you want ideas about or are there specific things you're looking for? Well, you know, um, as far as the engagement piece, making sure the community engages in this process is really critical. So it's important that the opportunity for their feedback is, you know, um, broad. So the website is one way, and what people can do when they get on to inspiredowntownic.com, when they can go to the website, first of all, you can read all about the project, how it was started, why it was started. One of the reasons the Streetscape update is um, underway is because a lot of our infrastructure down here is aging. Some of the electrical underneath the Ped Mall is um, outdated or broken. The events often have a tough time with the electrical piece especially. But then, you know, the lampposts, the kiosks, there, I mean, there's rusting going on. Um, and we just feel like, you know, over the course of time, United to always kind of keep things fresh um, so that this area is competitive. So on the website, the opportunity for the public to weigh in is really all over the board to understand the project, see who's listening. You can look at all the community leaders that are reviewing the ideas and there's actually an opportunity for them to engage back. If you've got a great comment, then um, Jeff Ruin at the City of Iowa City is going to respond to that. Uh, and then there's also um, ways to upload photographs. You can post your own photograph when you went on vacation to um, San Francisco. I saw this great alley. It was the most amazing thing. And you can take that picture and upload it to the site for everybody else to see. And then really the nice thing about it is that the community is having the conversation about what works about down here, what doesn't, because there's some very specific questions on there about, you know, how can, you, how can we be more green? Um, what kinds of things are working really well? What kinds of things do you see that aren't working? And then allow the community to provide feedback, and then you can go in and vote. Like, I love this idea, vote, 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 vote. You know, you can um, find ways that your, the ideas that the community loves really kind of rise to the top, and everyone sees that. 
Um, and or if there are issue areas that rise to the top, you can really vote on that. So it's really a, a dynamic um, website. We'll come back to my conversation with Nancy in a moment. But first, let's hear about the Antelope Lending Library, also known as the Bookmobile. The Antelope Lending Library is a mobile community library. It's in our Bookmobile. I work at Grantwood Elementary uh, in their after school program. And as I was talking with the kids that I worked with, I was asking them if they go down, downtown to the public library to check out books and to participate in activities. And only a handful of them had been, and only a couple of times. I realized that where these kids live, downtown is really far away. And it's more of like a special visit than something that they would do on a regular basis. And I wanted to figure out a way um, for them to be able to get to books more easily. The Iowa Youth Writing Project got involved with the Antelope Lending Library uh, since we actually have the same um, nonprofit community building organization acting as an umbrella of both of our endeavors, uh, which is the James Gang. And Cassie came to one of our board meetings and was talking about starting a community library. And the bookmobile uh, was kind of fortuitous and turned out so much better uh, than anyone could have imagined. It's just, it's really exciting and for us, the missions uh, were completely overlapping and in sync with each other. It was just sort of a perfect fit because we're all about um, educating and engaging and empowering and inspiring kids through writing and language arts and creative thinking. Um, and they're really coming from this creative literacy, community building uh, perspective. Um, so it was a really natural fit. It's been really successful and really fun. People are excited about it. On Tuesday and Thursday mornings, we're at Grantwood Elementary with the NCJC Summer Program, and that's a closed program. And we've partnered with the Iowa City Parks and Rec Department, their free summer playground program. So in the afternoon, we do activities. Um, today, we talked about autobiographies and biographies. Um, other times, we've talked about poetry, and we've done rhyming games, um, just different activities to get the kids involved in thinking. Um, and then the second half of the time, uh, we use in the bookmobile, and the kids can go through if they have their forms that have been signed by their parent or guardian, they're allowed to check out um, up to two books for two weeks. If they don't have their paperwork, they're free to read any of the books or use the materials while we're here, and then we just collect them before we leave at the end. People in the community are welcome to come. Like I said, the mornings are closed sites, but in the afternoon, anyone is welcome to come and make use of the library. We'd like to be able to continue into the fall um, and definitely next summer. Now let's return to my conversation with Nancy Bird for more on the Inspire Downtown IC website and future steps to be taken in the Streetscape Update project. Is there any uh, anything built into it where you can uh, share it socially? So say you, you really like this idea and want to vote for it and you want to tell all your friends to vote for it too. Absolutely, that's the intention. In fact, the more sharing of the website, the more people involved. Um, you know, you just build the engagement piece. People are vested into the, the best ideas. So, um, you know, the public website is really important. I think one of the most effective pieces about it, other than just gauging and uh, collecting ideas, is the fact that you can always know what's going on. Just check it out and you can see what the project schedule is. Um, the next public meetings are September 17th and 18th, so there's opportunity for you to walk in and give, you know, comment to the consultant team and the city and, and our leadership that are working through this process to have a, you know, a personal conversation. I mean, we're always open to that. Um, if there are service clubs who want to know a little bit more about it, I think we're willing to take the, the show on the road as well and present you know, how we're going through the process. So um, where we're at now, uh, the assessment phase, you know, the consultants that have been hired are, are looking at some of the engineering, the opportunities for green infrastructure, um, taking a look at the planters, you know, how healthy are the trees. We've heard time and time again that the trees are critical for downtown. downtown and, um, I couldn't agree more. I mean, if you're not shaded down here, it's hot, on just asphalt. So, um, you know, we're getting that feedback and it's confirming what we already sort of know. As things get taken to the next level, how can people sort of track the ideas that they gave? Um, you know, really the website allows you to see how there's been, how they've been voted on. But at the end of the day, the consultants have to take all of the ideas and package it, package the best of them into alternatives. and. I'm not sure exactly how the alternatives are going to lay out yet because it's a sophisticated process. Um, but what they'll do is they'll probably provide some options that show a very aggressive um, stance on how you can really refresh the downtown versus uh, some more moderate schemes that will be connected with costs. So as a city, as a community, I think we need to really weigh 
how much we love the aggressive scheme and are we willing to pay you know a certain level and where is that funding coming from um, versus others and and I think the critical part is to make sure that whatever the options are that we're looking at the lifelong um, the maintenance cycle and that this is something that we can afford but also identify opportunities for grants or other financing if it's something that we just think is absolutely a must. Um, so the financing is a big part of it and you know, in making sure that our expectations don't you know, run away, um, we're gonna make sure that we're informing the community about the, you know, basically the decisions we have to make as we go. So it's gonna be a long-term thing and we'll have to keep our eyes open for all of that. That's the... right. And in, um, the, the project concludes in January. So this is all planning. Um, then in January, when we have a solid plan to move forward with, you know, we have an option that we've selected. This is how we want these treats to be, um, streets to be treated. These are the trees that we, you know, want to make sure uh, retain health. Um, new playground features, things like that. Once they're decided upon, then in 2014 we move forward with financing and implementation. Great. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me today, Nancy. You're welcome. And I look forward to seeing a productive discussion happening about the downtown streetscape. Thanks for having me, and I hope everybody out there can jump on the website or give us a ring. You know, I'm really open to talking to people and um, going out to, to meet groups to talk more in depth about these issues. Great. Thanks, Nancy. Tucked away in our vibrant downtown is a new business venture called Busy Coworking. Check it out. Busy Coworking is a shared workspace in downtown Iowa City. We have an open floor plan with about seven or eight um, spots for people to come and work. The coffee shop's also a good way to get out of your house if you work from home, um, but the thing that's missing in that scenario is you don't necessarily have the community. And you've got a community of people that you are working near and next to who become part of your network. Well, for people who work from busy co-working, what we have available up here is a fast Wi-Fi connection, um, space to work, including desks, high top tables, and soft seating. Everybody gets a storage cubby. We also have a shared printer, copier, scanner, mini fridge, a coffee maker, a microwave. We're basically all set up for people to be productive up here all day. We have a really nice environment, big windows, art on the walls. We sell memberships, uh, kind of like a gym membership. So you can just come in for a day, or you can um, get a pass with 10 days on it, or you can uh, be a member for a month or more than that. Monthly members get uh, more benefits. They can come in 24-7. They have access to the building. The members here really get to know each other. They become each other's friends, their networks. Sometimes they're able to refer each other for other work. In the workspace at Busy Coworking, we have a culture where it's not necessarily library quiet, but we do want to have a productive workspace for everyone up here. There's a lot of people like us who want to get out of the house, but also want to be in an, in an environment where they're productive. It can also be around other people. Busy Coworking is really excited to be a part of the Iowa City downtown district. We love the energy of being downtown. We hope to be a business that enables entrepreneurs and small businesses uh, by providing more inexpensive space uh, for them to really build their business. Our role in the community, I would say we're a place where independent professionals, freelancers, people who work remotely can come and work together and feel like part of a community um, on a daily basis. Last month, we showed you the planting of the Children's Garden on the Ped Mall in downtown Iowa City. Take a look at how much it's grown. You can watch all of these segments again by visiting citychannel4.com video or by turning to Channel 5 and calling into Video On Demand. Check out our other shows while you're there. Also, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates about other City Channel 4 programs you may enjoy. Find us there at facebook.com slash citychannel4. Thanks for watching this month's episode of Iowa City in Focus. I'll see you next time. You're watching City Channel 4. On TV, online, on demand, on Facebook, and now on the go on your mobile device.